Hello fellow miniatures hobbyists, Wylock here. I am currently working on my most ambitious project ever, a versatile piece of cyberpunk terrain. It's going to have somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 LEDs, all custom designed and built circuits. I'm about halfway done with this thing and it occurred to me that the tutorial video for it is going to be over half like how to deal with the electronics side of it, so I thought it would make good fodder for its own episode. So if you know nothing about electronics, but you're ready to graduate from reappropriating those tea lights, this is the video for you. All you really need is a fourth grade level grasp of algebra and about 15 minutes to invest here. So let me illuminate your horizons. This is the symbol for a resistor. Its sole purpose is to absorb electricity and do nothing else with it. You use this to control how much current is flowing through the circuit. Resistors have no polarity. You can stick them into the circuit either direction and they'll perform exactly the same. Resistors have units of ohms and are represented by the omega symbol. This is the symbol for a voltage source, also known as a battery. Without a voltage differential, no current can flow through a circuit. Unlike resistors, batteries have a positive and negative terminal. Their direction matters. Voltage sources have units of volts and use the symbol V. This is the symbol for an LED. When you put enough current through it, the material inside gets excited and emits light. LEDs also have polarity, that is, a positive and negative terminal. You need to install them in the right direction. If you connect these three devices in a loop with some wire, you get a completed circuit and the LED will light up. So, what's there to care about? Well, LEDs are rated for a certain current. The unit for electric current is the ampere, represented by the symbol I. But one ampere is a lot of current. For reference, a vacuum cleaner draws about 10 amperes. These tiny LEDs that us hobbyists deal with draw something more like 20 milliamperes, or milliamps. That's 20 thousandths of an amp. Not much at all. And here is the one and only formula you'll really need to know. Voltage equals current times resistance. V equals IR. This is called Ohm's law. So suppose your LED requires a running current of 20 milliamperes, which for reference is pretty standard. And suppose you're using a nine volt battery. Let's apply Ohm's law. Nine equals 0 0.02 amps times resistance. Solve for resistance. 9 divided by 0.02 is 450 ohms. Well, almost. There's just one more thing to consider here, specifically when dealing with LEDs. It's called forward voltage. To grossly simplify it, imagine it as a sponge. The LED kind of has to absorb some of the voltage being fed to it before it actually lights up. That threshold is called the forward voltage. So we tweak the term in the formula. The V term changes to V source minus V forward. Thus, if the LED has a forward voltage of two volts, which is pretty typical, then our earlier example becomes this. Nine minus two is seven volts, and seven divided by 0 0.02 amps is 350 ohms. This is the true correct answer for this circuit. Likewise, if the forward voltage was three volts, then you would need a resistor of 300 ohms. What if you don't have a resistor that's 350 ohms? Well, by putting two resistors together in series, you add their values together, and they perform as if they were one resistor of that size. Easy. Remember, resistors in series add together. Resistors in parallel do not. Now suppose you want to power two LEDs. The first way to do it is in parallel. Notice that this circuit has a branch in it. Both sides still touch the terminals of the battery, so both branches experience nine volts. In this way, you calculate both branches exactly the way we've been describing. But look what happens. You have 20 milliamps running through both branches. So you add those together and you're drawing 40 milliamps from the battery twice as much. Which makes sense, right? I mean, it's two LEDs, so of course you have to draw twice as much current to power them. Not so fast. Let's try them in series instead. The math here is the same. Ohm's law does not change. All you do is add the forward voltages together. So if these LEDs had a forward voltage of two, then our formula would look like this. 
9 minus 2 minus 2 equals current times resistance. So 5 volts divided by 20 milliamps equals 250 ohms. So you install a 250 ohm resistor. And that makes sense, right? Less resistance because you're powering more stuff. And the good part here is this circuit only draws 20 milliamps from the battery, powering those exact same two LEDs as before. That's awesome, right? So what's the catch? Well, if the forward voltage exceeds the source or the battery, then obviously you won't have any current and nothing will light up. Look, these four LEDs have a forward voltage of three volts. Add that together, it's 12. And nine minus 12 is negative three. If you build this circuit in real life, literally nothing will happen, no lights. Now, what if you need more voltage? Well, that's easy too. Just add another battery in series. Their voltages add together. Two 9 volts in series, you've got 18 volts to play with. You can overcome the forward voltage of a lot more LEDs that way. So, in general, you should always wire your LEDs in series to the extent possible. It maximizes battery life. It's also easier to build. Lastly, this is the symbol for a switch. By simply installing a switch in the circuit right next to either side of the battery, you can interrupt the current and turn everything off. No current, no battery being spent. Now how do you assemble all of this? Soldering. This here is a Weller solder station. It was about 50 bucks 15 years ago, and it's a pretty good enthusiast level soldering iron, but you can easily find an intro level soldering iron starter kit for 10 to $20. To assemble electrical components, you're going to need some connecting wire. This is extremely cheap, thin wire available literally anywhere. Chop a short length of it and strip a few millimeters of the outer jacket from one end, exposing the metal wire inside by very gently squeezing your cutters and twisting around, then pulling away perpendicularly. First, you tin the leads. This means melt on some solder to each of the two things that you want to connect. Then, touch them together and pin them in place so that they're touching with some alligator clips or even just tape. And then with a simple caress of the soldering iron, the solder on both tinned ends melts and flows together. And about two seconds later, it cools and hardens together. Remember that batteries and LEDs have polarity. You need to solder them into the circuit in the correct orientation. Batteries are easy. Their terminals are always labeled. LEDs come with a long leg and a short leg. The longer one is positive and the shorter one is negative. To connect batteries together in series to boost your voltage, connect the positive terminal of one to the negative terminal of the other. Now where can you get LEDs? Well, there are proper electronics parts suppliers such as DigiKey or Mouser, but I prefer to hack the system. Christmas light strands. It is actually more economical to buy a strand of LED Christmas lights and harvest them than it is to order from a supplier and pay the shipping for it. There's a few problems with this though. After you've extracted the LED, how do you know which one's positive and which is negative? Well, I keep a standard watch battery at hand. This is just a three volt coin battery. And try it both ways. It'll only light up one of the two ways and that'll tell you which leg is positive and which is negative. Also, when harvesting Christmas light LEDs, you don't have a spec sheet. When you buy LEDs from a supplier, they always come with a sheet that tells you what's the forward voltage and what's the nominal running current. Remember in our earlier example, we were dealing with a running current of 20 milliamps? Well, not all LEDs need 20. Some might need 30 or 40 or 60. Also, we know from earlier that forward voltage is very important because we have to choose the correct resistor. With an oversized resistor, we get too little current and dim light or no light. And with an undersized resistor, we'll get too much current and possibly blow up the LED. But we can't pick a good resistor if we don't know the forward voltage. So here's what I do. We know for a fact that LEDs of this size have some good rule of thumb forward voltages. Green, yellow, and red tend to be around two volts. Blue, white, and purple tend to be around three volts. So we know that if we connect, say, five of them in series, we could connect them to a 9-volt battery without any resistor, and nothing will happen, since the total forward voltage is too high. So, back it off by one LED. 
button still not on. Back it off one more. Ah, so three of them will turn on, and quite brightly. So I know these LEDs have a forward voltage of less than three. Now on a side note, this is odd, right? We have no resistor in this test circuit. If we use Ohm's law, shouldn't the current go to infinity? Well, mathematically, maybe, but of course, there are some physical realities to consider. The wires and leads and solder in this circuit do have some inherent natural resistance, as does the battery. And the battery does have a maximum amount of current that it can put out. So in this test circuit, yeah, all three are on and they're very bright, but we are drastically shortening the life of these three LEDs. They may very well burn out after a half hour. And even if they don't burn out, we're still drawing max current from the battery when it's totally unnecessary. With the correct size resistor, we can bring the current way down and still get the exact same brightness. So that's great. With these unknown Christmas light LEDs, we've at least figured out that the largest number of them we can fit on a 9 volt is 3. At this point, I like to just start testing different resistors. 10 ohms, same brightness, that's nothing. 100 ohms, same brightness. 220 ohms, starting to dim ever so slightly. 330 ohms, noticeable dimming. Okay, I feel like 220 ohms gave me satisfactory brightness, so I will select 220. I don't know what current this is producing because I don't know the forward voltages, and I also don't know what the desired current would even be, but I don't need to know any of those things. The fact that it started to dim at 330 must mean that we're right near the ideal current with 220, whatever it may be. A final note on resistors, don't sweat being too exact. At the numbers we're dealing with here on these LEDs, the difference between 300 and 330 ohms is basically negligible. So don't start stringing together a bunch of small LEDs so that you get exactly, you know, 335 ohms. You just need to be ballpark. I mean, again, look a moment ago where we tried to figure out the right resistor for those three LEDs, not using math, but using brute force testing. Putting it all together, you know how to optimize your power usage on a single branch of a circuit. A branch being a series chain of LEDs with a resistor in line. Now you can take several of those branches and connect them to the battery in parallel. You are limited only by the maximum current draw of the battery. In my experience with these, you can get away with four of these chains, 12 LEDs total, without any brightness sagging, lasting at least 12 hours. Here's some footage of my work in progress cyberpunk street terrain. It's one 9 volt Duracell battery powering all of these. I know the wiring and soldering is a mess, but it didn't need to be pretty. None of this will ever be seen once the buildings are done. And here's one more overhead view of a test circuit showing three branches in parallel, brilliantly lit by one 9 volt battery with proper current going through them, and therefore maximum battery life and LED life. Longtime viewers will know that this is not the first such primer I've done on custom lighting. There's a video a few years ago, it's terrible video quality and not as concise as it could have been. That said, it goes into electrical theory a little more if you want to understand. So I'll throw a card on the screen. If you're new around here, feel free to subscribe. That cyberpunk terrain is coming up in the next couple videos. Till then, I'm Wylock. Make things, play games.